Welcome to the Cop Eye Podcast with your hosts, Mick Moran and Jay Pearson. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cop Eye Podcast. As usual, it's Jay and Mick's here as well, but again, we have got a very, very special guest with us right now. He is one quarter of the best midfield in the world, uh, signed by Rafa Benitez in the summer of uh, 2005 and spent three years playing for their wonderful club that is Liverpool FC. Uh, we are delighted to welcome Momo Sissoko. Momo, thank you very much for joining us today, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Momo. Well. How are you, mate? You having a good day? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, with the situation of coronavirus, it's not easy. Because yeah. now it's the one month and a half. We have to stay at home. Yeah. We don't do nothing. We miss football. Yeah. But at the end, we need to, to respect this 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 uh, situation and uh, I wish everything is going to be alright for the future. Absolutely mate and we, we echo those thoughts as well. Um, before obviously all this happened, was you, uh, was you, have you been watching many Liverpool games uh, before yeah. the, it happened? Yeah, of, excited? Course. of course, so all the game because you know I play in Liverpool, I support Liverpool in England yeah. because they have a lot of success and I'm very happy because they deserve it. Yeah. Did you watch the final in Madrid? I saw the final. I yeah. saw the final. I was very happy, and uh, you know Liverpool. You know it's a special club. You know, like I tell you all the time. You know when you have this chance to to play for Liverpool, it's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Well, you're very much loved over here, mate. Uh, we, we we've always loved you. Uh, you're one of the best players we had, mate. So, yeah. Uh, again, thanks for joining us, mate. And uh, Mick, you, you crack on, buddy. Yeah, so well, we're just going to start from the beginning. So when you first joined Liverpool, um, I, f- I believe there was quite a few rumours floating around that Everton were quite a big team that were interested in you. How, how, close that, how close was that move before the eventual move to Liverpool happened? It's true, it's true. You know, I meet uh, David Moyes in uh, Amsterdam, you know, in the, in the airport. And he, he wants to sign me for Everton. After that, you know, I have uh, my agent have a contact with uh, Rafa Benitez. So after that, you know, I have a meeting with uh, Rafa and I accept to join uh, Liverpool 100% because the project, the club, the history for the club, it was, it was amazing. I love that. I love how it's like Everton are interested. As soon as Liverpool come in, yeah, I see you Everton. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yes, and especially because it was obviously the second time that Rafa had signed you. Obviously, he signed you for Valencia. So when he came in for the second time for you, was that did it, was your decision made up easily then once Rafa came back in for you? Yeah, for sure. The decision it was easy for me because I know Rafa. You know, he gave me the opportunity to play with 70 years old in Valencia. Uh, he's, you know, he gave me everything. So you know, when Rafa talked to me, it was uh, straight to I. I decided very quick. And I decided to join Liverpool, and uh, I'm very happy. So away. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, your um, your first trophy for Liverpool came in in the uh, 2005 Super Cup. Um, you came on as a, a sub for Xabi Alonso. How much did that trophy mean to you? Obviously, you'd won it the year before with Valencia in 2004. So I was wondering how, how it compared in terms of winning it with Valencia and winning it with Liverpool. And I mean, it's the same trophy, but did, was it, did it feel any different to you winning at Liverpool? No, it was the same, more or less the same. But you know, when you first came and you have a big trophy like Super Cup with Liverpool, it's, it's important. For, for the, it's a good start, you know. So to be honest, uh, the Super Cup, it was, uh, for me, it's uh, one big trophy. So, you know, in my palmares, I can say that I have two Super Cup. <laughs> it's very good, yeah. very good. With 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 when Rafa uh, signed you, Momo, and did he explain to you what your role within the team would would have been? Because obviously you were joining with the likes of Steven Gerrard and Javi Alonso in that squad as well. How did you feel? How you could contribute to the squad? But for me, you know, you know, when you came, I, I was I was not afraid because I know he was two big players like Javi Alonso and CVG. But before also, I had two big centre midfielder in Valencia, Alberto and Baraja. So I, I know, I, I know what if I join Liverpool, I know what is the situation. So I was not afraid. I just said I go to Liverpool, I do my best, I play like I, I play, and uh, we will see. 
But you know, when I came, everyone was good with me. Chavi, Gerard, he helped me a lot. And with the young, when you are a young player, when you have this 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 player of Liverpool, uh, uh, Chavi, Chavi on the CVG, you you can learn a lot. And you know, I learned a lot with these two players. Definitely. I think it was a compliment to yourself as well because Rafa really believed in your ability because before you came, Gerard was mainly playing in the middle. But when you arrived, Gerard was playing you know, a lot on the right-hand side and that's because Rafa wanted to get you in the squad. So I think you could always say you elbowed Gerard out of position. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, you know, uh, Stevie G, he can play everywhere. Yeah, you absolutely. Put the white winger, defender, every position... He give one hundred percent and and he's very good. So you know, after, when I came, you know, Rafa make uh, me and Xavi in front of of me, uh, uh, CVG and uh, Fernando Torres. So it was it was good, uh, good. Uh, it was good for everyone. I think that 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 period in everyone's memory is is such a especially for mine because I was like yeah. sixteen, seventeen years old, just growing up and just starting to like properly go to the Liverpool game. So like seeing you and the team alongside Alonso and Gerard and Torres, that's such a, a great a great time for all Liverpool fans. So but it's a pleasure to speak to you finally. No, thank you. It's a pleasure for me. <laughs> so especially when you joined, um who were the cl- your closest bonds within the dressing room? Obviously there was like sort of the the uh Gibral Cisse and um uh J- Jimmy Traore as well. Traore, yeah. Yeah. Were they the two that you made that mainly helped you settle in when you first joined? Yeah, I think you know, you, you, I, I have the chance to have a yeah, French player like uh, Gibri Cisse and uh, Jimmy Traore. Jimmy Traore helped me a lot, to be honest. But after that, you know, also the Spanish people, you know, because I speak Spanish also. Yeah, so I good. have all this mix, you know. On the beginning, I didn't speak uh, in, my my English was very poor. So, you know, I tried to talk with. Uh, with the uh, Karager, you know, with the Stevie G, but it was <laughs> not easy possible. for me. No. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was not easy. So, you know, I learned, I learned, and after we have a good conversation, and, uh, you know, we are talking all the time. Superb. Boss. So, I want to just move on a little bit. Obviously, in, in, your, in your first season uh, in, against Benfica, you suffered that quite by, bad eye injury. Yeah, I remember the game quite vividly, and it was it was horrible to see you go down like that. And I think everyone was was fearing the worst. Obviously, it wasn't just fearing for your the current season; it was fearing for the the rest of your career because it, it seemed like pretty pretty bad injury. I was just worried for your career at the time. You know, this time I remember all the time. You know, I think to be honest, huh, with out of this injury, I can go more than what I do. You know, because this injury stopped me a lot. You know, my vision, it was not the same. But it's OK, this is football. But this injury was very bad because when I, I received, I said, for me, it's finished. Football is finished. When I, because I didn't see nothing. And after when I go to the hospital, the doctor tell me also, football is finished wow. for you. You wow. can stop. And you know, when you are in the, in the bed and some, the one doctor tell you this is a shock you know yeah but, uh, but i believe in god i said no it's not possible you know i i start football it was my dream and impossible i stop like this so i fight to 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 with the rehabilitation and after i, I fight i fight until i come back on the uh, <laughs> first time when i come back to play it was a uh, it was like uh, when I start to play football when I was young. Yeah, it was so like the, the, how serious the injury was. We, like like Mick said, we were fearing you'd be gone, but you were you were back relatively quickly. You know, before the end of the season, which was just that was incredible. The fact that you were back before the season had finished. Yeah. What? Yeah, what, because because oh. uh, you know I I believe I believe I know uh, I do a lot of work. I I. Uh, I go to check a lot of doctors from uh, from state, France, everywhere, and uh, you know after that you know they tell me is is not was n- not the same, but you can come back to to play football with uh, my son my famous sunglasses like uh, <laughs> like uh, David. Yeah, like yeah. David. <laughs> 
Hey, it was Still a good look for you, mate. Yeah, you had yeah. the <laughs> kids around Liverpool copying you, so it was, uh, it was funny. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> well, after I come back on the, you know, I, I play football again and I was very, very, very happy. Yeah. So, obviously, moving on a little bit then, um, you played a, a, key, a key part in the, the 2006 FA Cup final win over, over West Ham. Yeah. If, obviously, if it wasn't for Stevie G banging in like 17 goals, you probably would have been man of the match for me. You were absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. you were, you were absolute monster that day, and especially with it going to extra time, your your stamina helped a lot in those in that type of game because we needed you. But um, in terms of that performance and that day, how would you sum it up? And obviously, winning winning the FA Cup at Liverpool, how how much did that means here at that time? It's amazing, you know you. You win like a FA Cup. FA Cup is very important in, in, in England. So for me to win, you know, on the the way why we play, the way why you you fight all the game, and you know the you win the game. What happened and after what happened, you win in the penalty. Is a you know is a when I talk. I'm still remember on the. I have, <laughs> you I have see good... how happy you are. You yeah. See. yeah. <laughs> so it was very good game, and to be honest, I play very well in this final, and to and we win, and after that, a big party. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was just so... going to ask. Obviously, with the the Gerard goal that got got it back to three three was literally one of the the best goals I've ever seen. Yeah. And when I watched the clip back the other day, I noticed that you stick your leg out just as it's about to go back to Stevie G. But imagine you would have got your foot on that and stopped your ass. Oh, <laughs> what, could, yeah, it's true. what could have been? It's from, true. from your point of view, how good was that goal? It must have looked amazing flying in that bottom corner. Yeah, babe. You know, this type of goals, just big player can do this. You know, Steven Gerrard, all the time, he like a captain, like a... You know, he he give eight, all the time the good example, and you know, you when you you are big player on this moment you, we need this top player. You know, on this moment for the final, CVG <laughs> do uh, one good shoot, he score goal, and uh, on this moment my my heart it was stopping. <laughs> <laughs> as as was as well. <laughs> yeah. So no no very good very good remember. No, especially without the game started as well with like Carragher, the Carragher own goal, which is yeah. just, I wanted I wanted to start crying immediately when that one in. And I was like, and then he got another one, and I was like, God, this is this is not our thing. That's the thing as well. Was you um was you gonna was you gonna take a penalty uh, in the penalty shootout? Would you would you have taken one if needs be? To be honest, for the, this final, I I don't think so. <laughs> because I was I was very tired. I yeah. won a lot, and I, I don't. For me, in my head, I don't have this capacity to take this penalty. Mm. You know, because I was very tired. I was not lucid, so I prefer to say to no make engagement. I don't. I don't blame because it's like Mick said at the beginning. You, we'd missed for, for a long time. We'd missed the the type of player that you were. Um, into the dominating midfield, you know, long legs, pacey, could could throw in a tackle. You know, Diddy Hamman did a great job for us, but obviously he lacked the pace, whereas you had the pace. And to, to to see your performance in that final was absolutely incredible because it was something like, right, this is what we've got now. And then obviously going into next season when Mascherano arrived as well, you two really, really complimented each other, didn't you? Um, and it was, it, it was the best midfield in the world and that's how the song goes. <laughs> yeah. No, you know... We, it's true we have four sometimes the four the top player and you know too for me it was uh, it was good it was good to play with uh, this uh, this player like Charlie CVG Mascherano and uh, it was uh, it was good it was very good you know I learned from for ev- from everyone and we have good uh, good relationship so this was the more important you know and yeah. with the, with these songs Liverpool uh, Supporter with this song, you know, Xavi Alonso. So come, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On this song, you know, it was amazing. amazing. <laughs> that, that's the thing. A lot, a lot of Liverpool players say that once they've got a song on the cop, then they feel like they've, they, you know, they've made it. And how did you feel it, giving your name as part of that song? No, it's true. You know, when I was playing in Anfield, all the time when I was, I, I, you know, I, I was playing, you know. 
but when I was uh, hearing my my song, I have a more powerful. I was more powerful. Yeah. So, you know, if it's the it's the Liverpool supporter give you something, you know, special, you know, to yeah. to to play very well, you know. Yeah. So, um, moving on a little bit, moving to obviously the the the, the two thousand and the six oh seven Champions League final, which you unfortunately didn't play in. I know you'd had an, a knee problem in in the build up to that, but um, when you look back at the the, the, the build up to to the Champions League final and uh, playing against Barcelona, especially that, what did you make of the, of the Barcelona game? It's Barcelona game, you know. It was a good game, you know. We go to Camp Nou. We play against Ronaldinho, Deco, uh, Eto, the big, big, big Barcelona. And we go there and we we win. But before this, in, in this week, a lot of things happen. Mm. The fight, the fight, Bellamy, uh, Riza, <laughs> you know, uh, all this, it was, uh, how is possible? We have all this. <laughs> All the problem, and we go to Barcelona and we win there. Yeah. We won there. And uh, Riz assist for Bellamy. <laughs> you know, it was a, yeah. <laughs> it was a crazy <laughs> thing, you know. Unbelievable script, wasn't it? But again, your performances in the new camp was was incredible. And then yeah. coming back to Anfield as well. Obviously, we we lost that game, but it, it never felt like we were going to go out of the tournament because we were so dominating from the first whistle and. How much do you remember of your, your shot from 45 yards that hit the bar? <laughs> it was better if I score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was much better if I score. You know, it was good shoot, all these things, but at the end, if I score, it's not the same, you know. But it's okay, you know. I was happy to play this type of game, game you know, big game against big player, you know. So for me, where, where I'm from, it's just a, it just just a dream come true, and you know I'm very proud of this. You know. Yeah. So obviously, we talked about the first leg and and the and the whole Bellamy and John Anarisa thing. What what was your uh, outlook from that? What did you what did you did you see anything in particular? I, I, I saw two teammates fighting. <laughs> <laughs> fighting. Fighting with, but with, uh, you know, for, from the no. golf. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This happened. This happened in my street in France, you know, <laughs> but not in football, <laughs> you know. But after, you know, it was it was good, you know. It, it was not uh, like a crazy thing, you know. These things happen all the time, you know. But after, you know, you see we win this game in Camp Nou, assist, uh, reserve Bellamy. After that, check end. Every everybody happy in the dressing room. After after Bellamy and Riz kissing, you know. So <laughs> good, good, very good. And I, I, obviously, I just touched on the the Champions League final that you unfortunately couldn't um, be a part of due to the, due to the injury. How much of, of a disappointment was that to you at the time? Big, 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 big. I was very now, you know. When you you play all the game, you you know you try to go to the final. You go to the final with the, your team. One day before you have in, one injury, the day after yeah. is the final. I was, to be honest, I was dead. I was dead because I said no. I work all this thing to to win this Champions League. I want to help my team. I want to, but after that injury, you can you can uh, you can uh, play. Um, that summer then we 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 signed Fernando Torres um, and then it we start quite well in, in terms of the season and you you've got a bit of you've got that strike force that we've always sort of won with, with with Torres and um, but you know it's not just Torres that got in on the goals that season was it do you remember your Sunderland goal yeah yeah I remember <laughs> I remember Berlin pass Sissoko Sissoko shoot goal. <laughs> You could see the relief in your face and how much you loved it when you did score that goal. It was brilliant. Yeah, because you know, for a player when you don't score a lot, you know, when you score, you feel like you're crazy. <laughs> so 
<laughs> and this moment I was happy because it was my, it was my first uh, my first uh, goal with Liverpool shot. So you know, I was making goals in the FIFA. <laughs> I, 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 I score when I when I play, so it's good. Yeah. So uh, in terms of obviously we, we've touched on Rafa Benitez and how he signed you twice and um, how much he must have believed. You know how how much did he how much of a role did he play in in your in your football career? How do you regard him? Like is he like a father figure to you? Because obviously we we've, we've heard a lot of interviews from like Steven Gerrard who says that he couldn't really relate to Rafa because he was quite cold as a character. What what did you make of him in, t- in in the dressing room and how he was as a coach? No, for me, Rafa, you know, I know I know him very well. You know, Rafa is like my second dad because, you know, you know, when he, when coach like him give you the opportunity, he treat, he treat you like his son. When he, he respect you, he, you know, he give you everything. You need to you need to to be uh, very happy of this and you know Rafa for me was amazing because he was big he's a good big coach he's a good good person and he's true he was very cold but he's his personality but yeah. at the end he win he win with Liverpool he I think in my opinion you know he makes Liverpool what is right now because you know he starts he starts you know Gerard Louis good make a good job but yeah. after that uh, Rafa came he make one one two three step more on after the club he's making the good good uh, cake yeah absolutely spot yeah. on mate couldn't have summed yeah. that up any better <laughs> sure. so obviously moving on a little bit then I've just before we started recording the show Momo this <laughs> so obviously in in January 2008 you had you you moved to Juventus where to join Claudio Ranieri. Yeah. How, how much of a tough decision was that for you at the time? But for me it was a tough decision because you know I was in Liverpool. You are never it's not like I was in uh, Derby County. You know with all the respect I have for Derby County, I was in Liverpool. I was playing very well. I was, you know, I feel I was in the in for the in the city. All it was good for me, you know. But after you, know, I decide, I decide, you know, with the club we make, uh, you know, uh, uh, Claudio Rani want me in in, uh, in Juventus. I want to move in Italy. So I decided to change. And after it was another big opportunity, you know, to join. One club like Juventus, so for me, like a like a young player on player, when you you decide to join this type of club, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good for me. It's, uh, it was uh, it was very good, very very good. Definitely. And and then obviously you were, you were given the nickname La, La Piovra. La Piovra, yeah. yeah. Well, what did what did you what did you make of that? La Piovra is like a La Piovra, you know. In England, in English, uh, uh, octopus. the octopus, the octopus, something like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, okay, good. Yeah. it's good that you're so, you know, well regarded with 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 so many fans, Momo. You know, because you had a great time at Juventus, and again, you you, you reproduced the exact same form you showed at Liverpool, and you know, for for fans of a bigger club as Juventus. They don't take to a lot of plays very quickly, but it seems like they really took to you just as much as we took to you as well. Yeah, it's true. It's true. To be honest, you know, that's, that's like I said to my uh, to my family. You know, I I'm happy to leave one big image where where I play. One big image where I play because you know, you know, football you have you can have success. You know, some people play some team. Two, three years, nobody remember this this player, you know. Yeah. So you know, I feel very proud and I feel very, you know, uh, happy to leave one good image in this club, big club. And for me, is is important for player is very important. Absolutely. You were on you were on television. I think it was last year, um, or the year before, and um, there was a video that was of what. 
Liverpool fans thought of you. And yeah, yeah. You seemed to get quite emotional in the video, Momo. And um, did that was that a surprise to you? Did it hit you hard then? It was a surprise, but I did, it was a surprise. But also, it was a. I said, now I was now. You know, when I I received all this message, when I received look, I said, oh, because I didn't know. I didn't know how the Liverpool supporter, how the Juventus supporter, how the world in the football loves Sissoko. I didn't know because I was playing. I was, but when you finish and you receive a lot of message, you really receive a lot of love from, from everywhere. He said, Momo, you do something very good, very yeah. strong, and you need to be very proud of you because you work for this. And you, you need to be very happy for all these things, you know? So yeah. that's why I'm happy. Yeah. Well, there's a very famous ban- banner, Momo is boss. So I feel like yeah. that, that sums up Momo's career. And obviously, because yeah. you're such a hard working player, I feel like that's easier to, to yeah. make yourself more love with the fans. Obviously, you gave absolutely 100% every game. Yeah. And when someone signs for someone like Liverpool, that's all the, the Liverpool fans want is 100%. So the fact that you gave that plus more, and then you went with our blessing to Juventus and done more of the same. I think that's why you're so highly regarded, especially the Liverpool fans, because we all love you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Don't make me cry, huh? <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying yeah. <laughs> um, well, one of the, the last two questions we want to want to ask is I'll ask the first one because uh, we have this show um, called the Squad Number Show. And we, so we always ask the players um, why you chose certain numbers. So you wore number 22 at Liverpool. Was there any significance, significance to that number or was it just it was, that was the one that was free? No, it was my favourite uh, number because I born on 22, 22 of January. That's right. why I, you know, and uh, that's why uh, is my uh, is my favourite number. Super, mate. Love that. Great answer. Last question is quite a difficult one. It's pick your ultimate five-a-side team with, with players that you've played with. You want the one, is the five, five one? Yeah. yeah so, what, so one goalkeeper, you can pick yourself as well if you want. Okay, okay. You don't so, have to though. You don't have to, it's up to you. Okay, just five player. So, so one, goal, one goalie and four outfield. So obviously you can go like maybe two defenders, one midfielder and a striker. Maybe. Oh, okay, oh, difficult. More difficult, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so Buffon. Yeah. Defender. Ayala. Yeah. Uh, Central midfielder Sissoko, Alon- Sissoko Alonso. Yep. How many now? That's that's three. So two more. So you can have anybody else. You've got two more. That, that, that's that's four though. I Ayala as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. Sorry. So I'm too one, excited. You've got, you've got a striker. You've got one striker to pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fernando Torres. <laughs> yeah. There, we go. <laughs> there we go. Brilliant, Momo. Well, well uh, listen. Um, obviously, we've, we we just want to say thank you so much for for your time. We know you're a, you're a, you're a busy man and everything with your charity, which is again some some wonderful work that you've been doing for your charity, mate. So uh, especially in these times as well, it's I, I just hope that you and your family are staying safe as well. Um, and we want to wish you all the best. And with uh, are you prepared to come back on again in a couple of months' time? We'll uh, we'll have another chat with you. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> thank you very much and, uh, for, for the for the invitation. And uh, I want to say thank you for everything, for the supporter, uh, LFC supporter. And I wish to return in Anfield to, to see what happened after this, all this here. Oh, wonderful. I'm sure you'd be welcomed any time, Mom, after. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, well, we'll start singing your song again, mate. Okay, <laughs> perfect. No problem. Thanks again, Momo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, mate. Bye. 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 Bye